What's up, dude? Ah, you know, just hanging out till 4.30. You know, kind of bored on a Friday, so. We're about there. You, you say you're bored, though. I mean, a little bit, yeah. Let me tell you about something new. Something new? Something that's not boring? What's new? What is it? I'm excited. All right, Colin, what is it? What's this new and exciting whatever it is that you just had to tell me about? Our 2024 new PFR studies. Oh. I mean, yeah, that, that's new, that's exciting. Heck yeah, it is. That's not new for us, but no. it is new for them. New for them. We should definitely tell them about it. I, I like that idea. A blind let's, squirrel let's finds get a every now and then, you know? Let's get started. <laughs> What's up, everybody? And welcome back to another edition of The Dig, a series dedicated to helping you improve profitability on your farm. I'm Aaron. And this is Colin. Let's, let's dig, dig in. in. So we're gonna hit on four new corn studies and four new soybean studies for PFR in 2024. New study, number one. Some of you are probably familiar with our success strategies omission study, where we take all five success strategies and pull out each one individually to evaluate which one is giving us the most benefit. That's exactly what we're doing in this study, but looking at planner settings. Our control or treatments with all the correct settings will consist of the following. Correctly set row cleaners, standard automated delta force, two inch planting depth, and correct closing wheel pressure. After we plant the control passes, we will start changing one setting at a time and then plant our omission passes. So those will include the following settings. Correct settings on everything else, but row cleaners set too aggressive. Correct settings, but too much downforce. Correct settings with one inch planting depth. Correct settings with singulation below 95% and then the correct settings with too much closing wheel pressure. Through this study, we hope to give some guidance to growers on how incorrect settings can negatively impact yields. New study number two. While we're on planting related studies, let's talk about another new study for this year, looking at starter fertilizer at different planting dates. Most of us think about getting the most bang for our buck out of the Inferro starter fertilizer, like 6246, earlier in the year. But do we see a response later in the season too? That's what we're hoping to answer in this study. Who knows, maybe we'll see a better response in the later planted crop. It wouldn't be the first time we've seen that in PFR, so we're excited to see the results of this study. I've got another planting related study for the viewers too, Colin. Are they all planter related studies? No, you should know the answer to that question. You're on the protocol committee. You see those studies before I even do. I didn't write the script though. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I'm just playing. We have tons of other new studies. We just don't have time to go over them all today. Can I continue, please, speaking of time? Go right ahead. New study number three. If you guys remember our video on biologicals, we talked about biostimulants, which are essentially the food for the existing biology in the soil. Check it out. Well, this year, we're looking at three different biostimulants that can be applied with the planter. Neovita 43, Phycoterra, and Torque and Furrow. All of these will be added to 6246 and applied in furrow. As the biological realm keeps growing, more and more products like this are gonna be coming onto the market. Hopefully we can start to get an understanding of what biostimulants work best when applied in furrow. New study number, number four. You know, Aaron, I thought this one would have been the first one you would have wanted to talk about. Well, you know, I, I do love drones, but sometimes you gotta save the best for last. I reckon. Well, after the success we've had with drones this last year, we decided to look at carrier rates when applying fungicide with drones in 2024. Two gallon of the acre has been the standard rate for us in the past when we've sprayed with drones, but can we drop to one gallon and still get the same result? Can we go up to three gallons and get even better results? Those are the questions we hope to answer this year in this particular study. Well, that's it for the corn studies. Should we start beans with planting related studies again? It only seems fitting. New study number one. All right, the first new soybean study in PFR for 2024 is the starter fertilizer rate single versus dual dribble study. What we're doing is comparing different rates of UAN dribbled with the planter and then comparing those rates on one side of the row and then splitting it on both sides of the row. The idea behind this came from the fact that we've seen certain situations where banding fertility on one side of the row has been more beneficial than both sides when we are dribbling on the surface. If we're leaving the nitrogen on the surface, we're opening the door to volatilization and we rely on mother nature to incorporate it. 
By banding on one side, there's a larger concentration of product, which means it may be able to incorporate a little easier and be less likely to volatilize. Number two. Narrow gauge wheels have become fairly popular in this last decade. We even run them on our bean planter here in Atlanta. But the question is, what benefits are we getting or are we doing harm by running them? Mm. That's what we hope to see in this new gauge wheel study, comparing a standard four and a half inch wide gauge wheel to a narrow three inch gauge wheel. The biggest benefit we have seen with our planter it, with the narrow gauge wheels has been the ability to plant no-till more effective. The narrow wheels seem to stay off the stalks a little bit better and not mess up planting depth as much. On the flip side of that, there is speculation that narrow gauge wheels can cause more sidewall compaction. In this study, we'll be able to compare the pros and cons and determine which option is best from a yield standpoint. New study number three. Moving on from planting, let's talk about our new fungicide insecticide application omission study. We already explained the process of emission studies earlier, so I won't go over that again, but let's take a look at the different treatments. The control is our enhanced application program, which would be spray at 8 a.m. with 20 gallon to the acre at 70 PSI and use green leaf turbo dual fan nozzles. The next treatment will be that enhanced application or control, but subtracting the 8 a.m. spray time and doing it at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. We've talked about carrier rate forever in PFR, so our next treatment will be the control with a 10 gallon to the acre application rate instead of 20. We all know that higher pressure tends to give us better results when spraying fungicides, so next we will do the control but run it at 25 psi instead of 70. And the last treatment we will swap out nozzles from green leaf turbo dual fans to just a standard twin jet nozzle. New, New study, study number, number four. four. Last but not least, let's talk about our fungicide insecticide application interval study. Have you ever been rained out while spraying fungicide or maybe something came up and you can't spray that load you just mixed up in your sprayer? So you leave the sprayer at the edge of the field, you come back tomorrow and run the agitation to get it mixed back up and finish spraying. We want to determine if there are any negative effects from leaving that solution in that tank for a whole day in the sun. In order to accomplish this, we'll mix up a tank of fungicide and insecticide, then spray the spray immediate passes. Once we do that, we'll leave the sprayer out there all day in the hot sun and spray the remaining treatments the next day. All right, well, after doing that episode, it's kind of got me jazzed up a little bit. I, I'm excited now, so I kind of want to just go plant a pot, to be honest let's, with you. Let's wrap this up first. Uh, that's a good call. That's okay. a good call. Let's yeah. wrap this up. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that little bell icon, too. That way you get notifications when we release new videos. And with that, we'll see you guys on the next episode of The Dig. Well, uh, I'm going to go get the planter out. I'll get the seed ready. And... You let me know when you're available, okay? It's 4.30 on a Friday and we just got rain. I'm going home. Just stop. Calm down. Please stop. Please stop doing that. Please stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's going on? What's new? What's happening? What's new with you? Like that? <laughs> <laughs>